Welcome back to another episode of Stress Less with Dr. SOS. We are continuing with part six of our special series called The Talk. And this week we wrap up our conversation with Jackie Grice, Dan Bannister, Angela Reddix, and my husband, Jason Scott. Collectively, they represent accomplished business leaders and entrepreneurs in our community. Each of them is successful in their own right and have very strong opinions about what's going on with race relations in our nation. Today, they continue the conversation by examining the impact racism has on people of color from a business perspective. Let's jump right back into the talk. And I, ju I just want to say, you know, um, just touching on what Dan and Angela said, it's if, if we're able to go beyond the package, beyond the color, what we find is that there's a connection, a spiritual connection, a value connection. I think if people start to look more at the things that make us similar and not look at those things that separate us, like skin color, which is so superficial, but your heart, the things that you love, the things that you want for your children. And I believe at the core of all that, we all want the same things, whether you're black, white, whatever, is that you, you want your children to go to good schools. You, you want them to have great opportunities. Um, you want a safe environment. You want to raise your kids in an environment where they feel safe and secure. So whether you're black or white, those are things that are just common, a common thread. And I think when we look at people and try to connect on those levels and not because you're black and because you, you know, attend my church or things like that, um, you just, just grow stronger bonds. Just um, so I, I think that is, it's just so important. If we could get to the point where we go beyond color and, and we look at the heart, we look at the values, the virtues, the spirituality that we share and that are common to all of us. So. But Dan, you talked a lot about business and the impact um, of being in business, the diversity that you're able to see, and you did this as well, Angelo, the diversity that you're able to see around you being a good thing. So with that in mind, how far do you all think American businesses have come in terms of racial equality? Who wants to take a stab at that? Well, I, I think that um, racial equality comes from the, the business leader or the business owner. Mm. And um, yeah. You know, I, I make sure that I have a fair representation. I don't, I do, but I don't, I, um, I try to hire the best individual that just happens to be of maybe a different ethnicity or somebody that looks like me. I don't, I don't um, make a hiring decision based on race, but I'd make a hiring decision on the best people. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm in my Chesapeake store as sales managers, I have a, I have a black woman, I have a, a Hispanic, I have a, um, an Asian, I've got a, I've got a white person I, and, and I, I have a, a black man. So I have a whole representation and that's the way that our society in Chesapeake looks like. Same thing in Norfolk. I, I you know, I, I want to have diversity, but I'm not going out there, you know, specifically looking for that, but I don't hire in spite of race, you know, like when maybe in some business, you'll look, look at them and say, well, I'm not going to hire them because of, of how they look or, you know, they're, they, they're not like me. I try to hire people that are not necessarily uh, like me and that don't look like me. I, I want to have a, um, a fair representation. And, and, and I think that um, Pastor Brown, I keep mentioning him, you know, the, uh, he was talking about it on Sunday is that, you know, until we're not going to have changes until we have people at the table at the, that are making the decisions that are going to, uh, and uh, diversity. You know, I serve on the National uh, Dealer Advisory Board with Nissan. I uh, represent uh, 1,100 Nissan dealerships, and I'm the only one there that's, that has uh, any type of, uh, uh, um, any type of color on their skin. You know, but what I try to do is that, you know, the only way that we're really going to be able to, or one of the main reasons way we're going to be able to do that affect businesses is have more people of, uh, of different backgrounds, different, uh, different races, different uh, genders, uh, different uh, religions, all that kind of stuff to get uh, to have a, if you have a, a business, it should, uh, your boardroom should represent those that you're serving. And uh, if, if you don't, 
then how can you relate to, to, the, uh, to the rest of the customers? You're missing out on something because you, there's no way that me are gonna co completely understand someone of a, a Muslim background or someone from the, that, that's a woman, somebody that's a, a, a white person. So I wanna have all those people to get together and let's make decisions together. And to, to like Angela said, having, a, having an open conversation about you know the the things that we can do better in a business and i just don't think that having a bunch of all black people all white people all of one thing is going to uh, help you and promote and get your business to the to the highest level so i think it uh, belongs in the, the highest level of management um, more representation from um, uh, ethnic minority uh, business owners and and um, for those of you who don't know there's uh, one statistic there's 18,000 uh, dealerships car dealerships in the united states well, there's only 265 uh, black dealerships, black owned dealerships. Wow. And that is, uh, to me, when I, when I heard that statistic, that is amazing. So I'm, I'm one of 265, that's, that's ridiculous out of 18,000. And, yeah. uh, you know, in order for, um, for people to uh, really grow and, and to get to know one, one another at, at a whole different level, we got to have more representation of people of color in different lines of business. And, and it's amazing what Angela's been able to do. It's amazing what Jackie's been able to do. And I can't imagine the, the struggles that they've had to go through in order to get to where they are and that they're, that they're very limited. In, um, and I don't know this factually, but it's, I'm, I'm guessing that there's not many people that look like them that when they go to their um, business groups or meetings or uh, that there's not going to, there'll probably be one, one of the few that they're going to look like them. So what I've challenged and what's my goal in life is that is to, is to, and in my business life is to be able to uplift the next person. So my goal is to put as many people that look like me in business a lot faster than the 22 years that it took me to get there. Dr. SOS, that, that's a, that's a big question that you just asked. And, and the key word in that, so is there equality, I believe is what the question was, um, in corporate America, was that the? Well, it, it's how far has American businesses come in terms of racial equality? So it's a variation of that question, yeah. So, <clears throat> equality meaning giving everyone the same resources mm -hmm. versus equity. And so that's a, that's a big debate and conversation in corporate America. So equality is giving everyone the same resources. So how far have we come with that? We haven't come very far with that. Mm -hmm. um, equity, distributing the resources based on needs. So the reality is, if you go back in time, uh, the African-American need is going to be greater than others because of where we're starting from. We're not mm -hmm. starting from the same ground zero is not the same. We're sub ground zero. So if so, when we're saying it do equality, it has it come further? Um, it's definitely come further. Okay. And um, the, the reality is equality is not only giving the same resources, which let's be honest, we don't get the same exact resources. Um, we, we don't. Um, now, how do we make the best of the situation? I will say that um, I think that we have gotten better with not being asked for a seat at the table, but creating the table. Mm -hmm. I think we have, we've taken a bite into the entrepreneurship apple, and we understand that we can't sit around and wait to be seen as polite seen as articulate, seen as smarter, faster, stronger, better, all of that, mm -hmm. that there have been a few who have created tables and been very intentional about inviting others to our table. Mm -hmm. Now, those who are, I look at the Bob Johnsons of the world and the, the Kathy Andrews, all these people who have created the table and they're smart. Yes, they invite us to the table so we can participate, but they recognize that the strength of that table means that we have to see other perspectives. So what Dan was saying as far as inviting other people to the table. So I, I, I think in that way, we are creating a path so it continues to get better. Um, but it is going to come 
from us understanding our natural skill sets, our natural tenacity, our natural strength that comes from generations of fighting, as in Color Purple, I've been fighting all my life, but fighting <laughs> because we have had to fight. So that tenacity, it pays off big time in corporate America and in entrepreneurship. Um, and so I think it's important um, more so than ever before. We talk so much and think about the George Floyd knee on the neck in the perspective of um, the number of deaths that are happening to our people at the hands of um, police. And it's bad. I will dare say that pieces of us die every day in corporate America. Amen. And it is because of the unconscious biases of not just the majority, but also the minority, that we cannot be our true selves every day. So every time I tell my son in this 30 minute drill, I am doing that as a mother because I want to see my son's face just another time, Lord, just one more time. But every time I'm asking him to dim his light. Now, the reason I'm able to be where I am today is because I've let my light shine. Now I'm telling him to dim his light, his style, his swag. Dim it, baby, because I need you to stay under the radar just so you can stay alive. Mm -hmm. So every time someone enters corporate America and we tell them, okay, ooh, don't wear your hair like that to the interview. Ooh, don't wear those clothes. Mm -hmm. A piece of them is being chipped away every day. And so when we're talking about the death of the African-American, are we not talking about or should we not consider in corporate America how we're telling these people, don't be you, don't be the individual that God created you to be so you can, so you can fit into this stereotype mm. that makes everyone comfortable. Yeah. I need you to see me for all the fullness of me. If this wasn't such a big deal, we wouldn't have had to have legislation, the Crown Act, just so you can wear braids to work. That that's ridiculous that it takes a law for us to say that, <laughs> yes, be clean, like clean under your nails, I mean, be clean. <laughs> but the reality is we all are individuals and if everyone looks like Angela, that's a boring world. Absolutely. Individuality that makes us sweet. So have we come further in equality? We've definitely come further. Do we have a ways to go? Yes. Is it incumbent upon us when we're picketing and, 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 and peacefully protesting? Is it simply about the police? Yeah, they need to stop all that craziness. Stop that. But do we in corporate America need to stop killing people every day? Yes, we do. So that, that, that's, that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, I mean, I, I, I like the way that you put that. Um, I, um, I guess I, I, I didn't really think of it that way, and, um, and, and, and I applaud you for saying it. Um, but I, I would say this is that, you know, in order for us to get to the table, sometimes we have to alter our behavior in order to get there. Awesome. And, and, then, and then we have to take it over and create our own table. And you're right. And that's why I say that we have to uplift more of, of us so we can create our own table and then bring others to it instead of the other way around. But, um, you know, I think that we, we have to, uh, I, have, I caution my kids that, you know, yeah, I want you to be individuals, but at some, some point you need to be able to conform in the environment that you are in in order to excel and then take off. That's right. And, and, oh, go ahead. And, and I will, we, we're all forced to conform in some way or another. In some way, period. We, we all have. We've all made choices to conform. Uh, but even in that conformity, uh, I remember a time a few years ago, um, here I am. I'm just coming off of winning Norfolk Small Business of the Year. I'm just coming off of winning the Commonwealth's uh, Young Entrepreneur of the Year for the state. Uh, and in the following year, I would actually sell my company, a company that has received two rounds of funding. Uh, and after I sell it, six months later, I'm invited to join someone uh, uh, as a co-founder. My co-founder would be a white guy. As he's at the attorney's office, after I've done all these things, employed eight to nine people for the last five years, uh, the attorney looks at him and says, oh, you're going into business with Jason Scott? He says, well, just be careful, because I heard he doesn't finish stuff. Now, this is a man I've never met. I've still not met him to this day. Mm. His words shocked my partner so bad, my partner called me 
from the law office parking lot to tell me that and to ask me, did well, I want to change law firms? I said, not in the immediacy, because we need to get this done so we can get cracking on what we need to do. But that is the uphill battle. It's just a simple example of the uphill battle that we're forced to fight every single day. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, that, that was a tiger slam for me that year. Couldn't get any better. And even so, as, as that triple threat, I was singing, I was tap dancing, and I was rhyming <laughs> all at the same time. And it wasn't good enough for this guy. <laughs> wow, what do you do? I mean, there's no level of conformity that gets me past uh, a person with his perspective. Hmm. But the other thing I hear is that in these conversations, number one, we're living in fear. If not fear for ourselves, definitely fear for our kids. And that's horrible. That's not equality. Anytime you have to have a 30 minute conversation with your son before he walks out the door, that's not equality. I can look around my neighborhood and I'm sure all of you can. And if we compare apples to oranges and we compare what is the 16 year old white kid doing with his hair to what the 16 year old black kid is doing with his, and that 16 year old white kid is wilding out with his hair, having the time of his life. And we're having to tell our boys, hey, cut it down, rock the Caesar cut, Keep it low, don't twist it. It's just, you know, the opposite side of the rule set is such a burden to us. And the fact that we have to apply them every single day, there is conformity. I think that as adults, we should expect conformity because we are electing to walk into a system in which we want to excel. And when you want to go into a system in which you want to excel, you have to play by the rules of those who own the system. Until, as Dan and as Angela, as Jackie has said, until we can create our own pocket of ownership in that system, which we've all managed to do, okay? But for our younger people, they, they should be able to live their younger lives and not be in fear that a decision to twist their hair or braid their hair is going to add to the equation of the possibility that they will get treated unfairly or not walk away from an interaction with police. And I say that, and my dad was a police officer, called him Shaft. And he made it to detective and rose all the way through the ranks. Mm -hmm. So I get both sides of that story. Uh, and I've gotten training before how to deal and interact with police my entire life. And he's always cautioned me, basically in the same way we're talking about cautioning our kids now, he's always cautioned me in the exact same way. And he was in the black and blue. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Stress Less with Dr. SOS. I hope you found it helpful and informative as we all continue to grow through the challenges of the racial divide in our country. And if you enjoyed the discussion today, join me again next week as we continue considering the many aspects of the talk. Until next time, choose to live well.